Hello Internet, welcome to yet another translation of one of my German videos. Since I talked about the arcade machine I bought a couple of months ago, there have been a lot of questions. Sadly, I don't have a lot of time and some of those requests would take hours to answer. But still, I want to tell you as much as possible about the 114 in 1 Extreme Plus that I purchased. And that's why I've decided to make some videos about one or more emulators and show you how well they run on the machine. At the end of each video, I'll also show you my five favorite games for the system. Of course, this project only makes sense if people actually are interested in it. I've decided to start with MAME because it has been around forever and works really well at this point in time. As most of you probably know, MAME stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator and as the name suggests, it is able to run most of the software that was originally intended for arcade machines. MAME was first released in 1997 and over the last two decades, it has gotten better and better. As I explained in one of my earlier videos, successful emulation depends on two factors. You need, of course, a good emulator, which MAME definitely is, and you need a machine that has enough processing power to run the software. My arcade machine should be sufficient. People always want to know how many games there are on this machine and if a particular game is included. There actually are some zip files on the manufacturer website, but the lists are a little confusing and get updated every once in a while. So, I have no other option than counting all the ROMs in the MAME section. If you pause the video at the exact right moment, you can check for your favorite games. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This will definitely take too long. I guess I should fast forward. <laughs> I just noticed that this might get a little boring. I'll put on some music for you. Wow, this is taking even longer than expected. And sadly, I don't know any other talented artists who will provide license-free music to me. Are you ready for a break? I am. Let's take a look at game number 1000 together. And it is Gunbird 2. 
I have the vague feeling that I've heard about uh, this game before, but I've never played it. Turns out to be a really nice classic arcade shooter. It's not quite a bullet uh, hell type game, but tough enough, as arcade shooters should be. I'll definitely come back to this one. I should speed this up some more, right? Okay, get ready. This will be quite hard to follow. Alright, we made it to 2000. Time for another break. At number 2000 we find Rock and Tread, which turns out to be a music and rhythm game, much like Guitar Hero or Dance Dance Revolution. This probably had some sort of special controller in the arcade, but I was forced to figure out how to play it with the buttons at my disposal. Game's kind of fun. I like stuff like this. Okay, break's over. Here we go again. We did it! The final count is 2910 games. Counting all of them actually took me almost half an hour in real time. That was quite tough. The game I found at the very end of the alphabet is called ZZYZZYXX. Or maybe Zizix, who knows. This one turns out to be some sort of maze and I wasn't quite able to figure out what to do. But oh well, honestly it doesn't really look very exciting. I doubt that I'll ever return to it. Wow, that's a lot of arcade machines. Now it would be awesome if they all worked. Small spoiler, they don't. But as I said in the beginning, MAME is a very fine piece of software. Of course I couldn't test every single game, but I did my best to examine some samples from the multiple decades of arcade history. In my estimation, um, estimate, estimization, damn, English is hard for me. Um, I would guess that about 90% of the games work flawlessly, without any graphical problems or sound glitches. And even the rest of the bunch is mostly not unplayable. Most of the last 10% suffer from minor glitches. If I had to put a number on it, I would say that maybe one or two out of a hundred games won't work at all. From old classics like Pong or Space Invaders up to modern shooters or fighting games there were, that were released in this millennium, there is a lot to play on this machine. Weirdly enough, I can't tell what makes a ROM run great and what causes problems. The very ancient wireframe Star Wars game, for example, is unplayable. The screen remained black, but I could hear the sound. Many modern games worked absolutely fine, on the other hand. Very mysterious. Let's go, 
Someone once asked in the comments of one of my older videos if scanlines were available on my machine. Well, on MAME they are, I don't know about the other emulators, and they seem to be um, activated on quite a few old games. Um, as you probably noticed by now, even the shape of the original CRT that was used in the cabinet is often emulated. There are actually quite a few graphics and sound options, but I never saw the need to mess around with them. As I mentioned before, whenever you see a picture that seems a little cropped at the top or bottom, it is due to my questionable capturing skills. On the arcade machine itself, everything looks amazing. To me it was very interesting to check out some games that weren't meant to be played with a regular arcade stick setup. I started with titles that had light guns attached to their original cabinets. As I said before, I don't own a PC light gun, but I was pleasantly surprised that most of those shooters worked with a stick and buttons without me having to tweak anything. It isn't as fun as using a big plastic weapon, but at least it works. Racers that originally came with a steering wheel or even a whole motorcycle <laughs> were also fully functional without attaching any peripherals. Strangely enough, most music and rhythm games don't work at all. And I'm not talking about the controls. It doesn't matter if I try to start a Beat Mania game, a part of the Dance Dance Revolution series, or any other Konami music title. None of them even make it to the start screen. Games which were played with a spinner in the arcade can be controlled with a stick now. But since I paid a little more money to have a spinner installed in my machine, I wanted to use it. It didn't work directly out of the box, but setting it up as the main control option was incredibly easy. I didn't even have to leave MAME or attach a mouse and keyboard to the unit. All it took was a button combination and I entered a settings menu. Once I picked the right option, I could simply move the spinner and after that it became the controller for that specific game for all time. This gives me hope for other emulators where I couldn't use a USB controller when I first tried it. I'm quite sure it will be very easy to set up light guns, racing wheels and other accessories in MAME. Sadly I discovered that the spinner was not the best investment. This machine isn't huge and it is covered with buttons and sticks already. So no matter how I twist and turn I can't move the spinner comfortably. That was all I had to say about MAME on the 114 in 1 Extreme Plus. I hope that most of your questions were answered. Now I want to reveal my 5 favorite games for this emulator. The following list might appear a little strange to you, but that is okay because I am a little strange. Most people's top 5 would probably consist of fighting games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat or King of the Fighters. And don't worry, they all run great. My taste is a little different though. I never enjoyed 2D brawlers a lot. The weirder a game is, the more appealing it is to me. And a multiplayer option is always very important for me as well. You should keep that in mind when watching the rest of this video. Here we go. We start with number 5. As I might have mentioned once or 20 times in the past, I love sports games, as long as they are not about a team sport. Games about the Olympics are always great. Competing with friends in short disciplines and setting world records is pretty much a perfect night of gaming for me. So I was pretty sure that Winter Heat would make my top 5 for MAME. I played this one forever on my Sega Saturn back in the day. Sadly, it is one of the games that suffers from gra graphical and sound glitches. It is far from unplayable, but I just couldn't enjoy it as much as I used to. I was lucky to find a great alternative though. Mac Breakers Newman Athletics 2 offers exactly what I was looking for. It plays like many of the other classics from this particular category. Just like in track and field, you often just have to push buttons as fast as you can to gain speed and then perform a simple maneuver at the end to perform an action. I love the humor in this game. Mac Breakers is about enhanced humans that compete against each other, so nothing that happens on the screen is even remotely realistic. The disciplines themselves are also hilarious. Dragging Godzilla through city streets and catching a nuclear bomb are just two of the attractions. 
Can't wait to check out the multiplayer on this one. For the number 4 spot I chose a true arcade classic. I'll keep this short because I already uploaded a full review of Tapper a couple of weeks ago. Or in other words, go and watch my other stuff. Tapper is simple, a lot of fun and all about getting people drunk. I play it almost daily and tried to beat the high score set by a kid some months ago. I guess that's what you get for letting other people play with your toys. We made it to the top 3 and I'm very happy that I can now talk about a game that I discovered because somebody asked if it was included in the main section of this machine. Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa reminds me of Cuphead, but it's a lot easier. It's based on a short-lived cartoon from the early 90s and apparently a comet crashed near a herd of cows and the radiation gave them human features and turned them into cowboys in the very literal sense of the word. The gameplay is quite simple and the levels are short, but this arcade classic looks amazing. Beautiful animations and bright colors make this a joy to play. And uh, another great feature are the many different types of enemies you encounter throughout the levels. The highlight for me are the boss fights, which, which are quite frequent. I haven't checked out the multiplayer yet, but it must be great. Only two more to go. I rediscovered Tondemo Crisis on my arcade machine. This game was known to me by its other name Incredible Crisis and I remember playing through the whole thing on the very first PlayStation. It's a crazy collection of mini-games. Different members of a Japanese family try to make it home in time to celebrate the birthday of the grandmother. This turns out to be a much harder task than it sounds because they encounter all sorts of unfortunate events on, the, on their way. Trying to stop a free-falling elevator, the attack of a giant teddy bear and surviving a highway ride on a stretcher are just some of the crazy situations the family members find themselves in. Tondemo Crisis is just wacky fun. The mini-games offer quite a bit of variety and the charming 32-bit graphics are nice to look at. The ska soundtrack does its best to create the frantic atmosphere needed for a game like this. Sadly, two of the mini-games are almost unbeatable because of the language barrier. Other than that, this game is great fun. It's number one, and my favorite game on MAME is called Ninja Baseball Batman. <laughs> no. That wasn't a joke, it's actually the title of this amazing little gem. This game has nothing to do with the international playboy by day and superhero by night Bruce Wayne. It's actually about colorful characters armed with bats who beat up bad people. Ninja Baseball Batman is the kind of game that makes me feel good about spending all my dough on an arcade machine. It was never released on any home console and it is one of the best beat'em ups I've ever seen. Once again the gameplay is quite simple. You just have to beat up everybody who shows up on the screen. In Streets of Rage fashion you fight through colorful levels filled with a variety of regular enemies and huge bosses. The animation is great and the synthesizer soundtrack will fight its way into your brain. Since all the characters are quite big, I imagine that a round with four players must be totally chaotic. I still really want to try it, so the next time enough people are around, I will hook up two extra controllers and give it a go.
Looks like we did it. Congratulations for making it through another one of my way too long videos. I hope you had some fun. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this and what emulators you are interested in. And I'm looking forward to your arcade recommendations because there are way too many games on my machine to check them all out. I'm gonna put on some pants now and look for adventure in the real world. Have fun gaming. Bye.